Hello, this is John Ball again, and welcome to CIS 1500. Um, this will be our uh, lecture four. You also have your programming project one assigned today. We'll look at that, and then we'll start on lecture four. So, your first programming assignment. Um, is due on February the 14th at 11.59 p.m. It's worth 100 points. It's to practice uh, using the fundamental programming constructs in Java, including data types, variables, user input, and console output. Now, we haven't covered um, how to get user input using the uh, scanner uh, object yet, scanner class yet, but we will cover that today. The instructions are that you are to create a Java program that will calculate a total restaurant bill and display uh, the total with tax and then calculate the tip for various percentages. Uh, you will create a new project and then create a new source file, .java file, name the file restaurantbill.java. Uh, make sure to give the source file a package to live in that isn't the default. And you should re uh, use reverse DNS not notation such as com.jpbaw.restaurantbill, com your name dot restaurant bill whatever you wish um, make sure that you you put your name the class and semester in comments in the top of the program before any other code unit um, again make sure you put your name class and semester in comments in the top of the program before any other code unit if you do not have that I will take off points. We will cover more about comments today also, so that should uh, uh, help with that. For this program, you're going to prompt the user uh, saying enter the uh, cost for a bill. Um, you will obtain the user input for the bill, pre-tax using the scanner object, calculate and print out the total bill including a 6% tax. So you should put something like total bill with tax, colon, and then dollar sign, however much the amount is, um, where the dot, dot, dot is whatever the total is. So you will print out something like total bill with tax, and then put the amount of tax, or the amount. Um, display the following tip values, 10%, uh, 15%, and 20%. So you should put the total, including the tax, and then a tip on top of that. Okay, the tip will be calculated after tax. So that means um, if you have a, a bill that ends up being $100, then with tax, $106, and then another 10% on top of that will be part A, and then 10%, uh, you should say something like uh, the tip for that will be, then you write whatever 10% is, and then 15% and 20% and specifying each value at a time. So it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you will turn in the assignment to desire to learn under the appropriate programming project, number one in this case. You just need to turn in the uh, Java source file. Okay, do not zip anything, just turn in the .java file. Okay, so the source file. So that's your assignment one. Again, it's due on uh, February the 14th, which is a Friday at 11.59 p.m. Um, okay, so today we're continuing with Java Fundamentals, uh, Chapter 2 reading. Uh, we're completing Chapter 2. So we're starting where we left off last time. This starts with... Uh, set, um, section 2.6 in the book um, starting out with Java uh, this time the fifth edition by Co uh, Tony Gaddis um, page 63 uh, section 2.6 we're going to go over combined assignment operators now so Java does have some combined assignment operators these operators allow the program uh, the programmer to perform an arithmetic operation and assignment with one single operator it's not required, but these operators are popular since they um, shorten simple equations. For example, if you have something like x plus equals 5, that's equivalent to x equals x plus 5. So if we go into Java and create a new 
are going to eclipse and create a new Java project. Um, we're just going to call this uh, uh, Lecture 4 uh, Examples. Uh, this right here, I'm going to add right click source and add a new class. I'm going to add a new one. Um, this one will be called. This one will be called um, combined up, and we're going to do package com dot prof jp dot combined up. Click finish. Um, we have to make a main method public static void main string array called arcs. And um, we're going to create a variable, x, we'll make it 10. And then we're going to do system.out.print then. I say x equals, so that will print out the initial value of x. We could um, test this by running it, just to make sure we've got something going on. So you'll notice at the bottom we do have x equals 10 being displayed. So now if I say x plus equals 5 and then print it out again, system.out.println, uh, say x now equals, if we run it this time, if you look at the bottom now in the console output, you will now note that we have x equals 10 being displayed, then x now equals 15. This is what we expect because we have x plus equals 5, that is the compound assignment operator, a compound addition operator, um, which adds 5 to x. So this is equivalent to saying x equals x plus 5. So basically with any of the compound operators, you take the variable listed on the left, and then you add whatever's on the right to it, and then store it in the initial variable that's on the left. Okay, so it's x equals x plus 5. It's the same thing with the subtraction. Um, same thing as the multiplication equals, division equals, and modulus equals. So these are all the com uh, combined assignment operators, are also known as uh, often called uh, compound assign assignment operators. You can also have constants in Java. Constants are another fundamental uh, concept uh, that we need to utilize in Java. Uh, so many programs have data that do not uh, need to be changed during the lifetime of the program. Uh, littering programs with literal values can make the program hard to, uh, it should be hard to read, hard to read and maintain. And uh, replacing literal values with constants remedies this problem. So constants allow the programmer to use a name rather than a value throughout the program. Constants also give a singular point for changing those values when needed. Now, um, an example of this is if we go back into Java here, I'm going to uh, close this and right click the package and make a new class. This time we're going to make a class um, called constant test and we'll call it, uh, uh, yeah we'll just leave it in the combined op package, that's fine. But we'll do that, constant test right here. We could give it its own package if we wanted to. Uh, but we'll just leave it, so pub public static uh, void main string parts. Okay, and in this case, um, we're going to um, declare a constant, and the way you do that in Java is the keyword final. So we will see that in just one second. Constants keep the program organized and easier to maintain. Constants are identifiers that can hold only a single value. Constants are declared using the keyword final. Um, they don't. They do need to be initial. Uh, they don't need to be initialized when declared, but they must be initialized before they're used, or a compiler error will be generated. Some programming languages you have to declare them on the exact line that they're declared, uh, or you have to initialize them on the same line that they're declared. Uh, once initialized with a value, constants cannot be changed programmatically. So, uh, conventionally, we uh, use all capital letters and separate different words by uh, an underscore. Um, this is different from what we do with uh, regular variables where we will use camel case. We typically don't want to use underscores 
and um, we don't use all caps. We would typically uh, use um, just a camel case. So we'd say uh, Cal sales tax and camel case it. But in this case, if we had the number 0 0.725 strewn throughout the program, people may not know what that number means. So for example, let's say I'll have an int total here um, equals 100, and then I'll say int uh, total with tax. Um, we'll initialize it to zero and then say total with tax equals total uh, plus, or total plus total times um, zero point, uh, we'll say 0 0.6. Uh, we probably want to make that a double though, don't we? Uh, double, make that 100.0, and then the total with tax will do the same thing, make that a double. Sorry about that. And you're going to take this total and add it to the total times the tax. So it's basically 1.06 times the total. That's what it ultimately ends up being. So then I'll do system.out.println. Okay, total with tax and then total with tax. If I run it, I get the value of 160. So, oh, that's a 60% sales tax, so that's a pretty high sales tax. Let's change it to 6%. Run it again, and we get $106. Um, so that's pretty um, decent. That's pretty much what we would expect here in Michigan, at least. Um, we have a 6% sales tax on something, but here's the problem. What does the 0 0.06 mean? What if I use it later in the program? What if I use it in multiple places in the program? It's not very um, evident, even though I did give this variable a pretty good name, it is not evident what 0 0.06 means. The other problem is, what if I change this value? Well, in this one place, it's not a big deal. You know, I could just change it to 7% um, right here, but what if it's used in 10, 20, 30 different places? It's annoying. It's uh, it would be even with find and replace, you don't know if you're correcting all of the cor all of the right things. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a final double. We're going to call it sales underscore tax equals 0 0.06. And that any occurrence of the tax that we need, we're going to just type sales tax instead of the uh, the uh, floating point constant here, the double constant. So if I run it here, we'll get the same exact um, solution. Uh, but now if I ever need to change it, I just change it once here, say to 8%, and then we can run it and get the value again. But if it's in multiple locations, you only have to change the value once. Then it will affect all the different locations that it would be uh, would be at. So constants are very useful. Um, so you put the again you put the keyword final in front of a constant. If you plan on a variable being a constant, then you have to put the keyword final in front of it. Now notice if anywhere else, if I try to change the sales tax after it's been initialized, say 0 0.009 right here, it's going to underline it and I'm going to get an error. If I hover over it, it says the final local variable sales tax cannot be assigned. It must be blank and not used, uh, not using a compound assignment. So if I try to run it, it's going to tell me there's an error. It's going to give me an error again down here, tell me the same thing, tells me what line it's on. So this is uh, something you can use here. If you click it, it will actually point to the line the problem's on. And that's why you can't do this. If this was not a constant, in other words, if you did not have the keyword final here, this would not be an error. Okay, but when we use constants and we want to prevent ourselves or others from uh, changing the value, uh, you definitely want to use constants and be careful with them. Okay, the string class. String class is very, very useful. Um, Java has no primitive data type that holds a series of characters. Okay, the string class from the Java standard library is used for this purpose. In order to be useful, the variable must be created to reference a string object. So strings are objects. Um, you say string uh, number, for example. Notice the S in string is an uppercase. By convention, class names should always begin with an uppercase character. So you might create identifiers that do not 
uh, you should create identifiers that do not uh, typically start with an uppercase, especially if they're just variables and not constants. But if you create your own class, uh, which we have done a couple times, the one that houses main, you will start it with an uppercase. That's um, not required by the compiler, but it is a convention, which means that it's a good programming practice and it's something that people do uh, frequently. So primitive versus reference variables. Um, we have to understand that there are two different types of variables, um, in two primary types of variables, and how they're um, how they're uh, how they point to memory or how they load uh, values, how they store values. So primitive variables actually contain the value that they have been assigned. So for example, if I say if I have a um, an integer, this is actually kind of bad that they did this said string here and then went into references. But if you have um, an integer variable, um, if we create another uh, class here, uh, let me see here. I'll call it um, I'll call it uh, variables. Okay, and uh, in main public static void main string args. I would say. Even if you're uh, relatively familiar with Eclipse by this point, or typing, that I would, uh, and you know, cut and paste, copy and paste, and all that, I would still recommend you get in the habit of typing out uh, public static void main um, to become familiar with uh, the Java programming language. So you could copy and paste if you're um, if you don't um, feel like typing out the whole thing, but it's uh, probably just as useful if you just type it out. It's, it's not really that long anyway. So, um, if I have a variable, an integer variable of a primitive data type, so int number equals 25, um, this is what we call primitive because it's of type int. It's one of the built-in primitive data types that are, that are available with Java. The value, 25, we call this a part over here the value because it's a literal value. It'll be stored in the memory location associated directly with the variable number. So we have this variable named number. It's an integer variable. Sorry, integer variable. And um, it is stored directly in the memory location directly associated with this uh, variable number. So basically, this uh, identifier number is uh, an alias for a memory location. OK, we don't necessarily have to know the memory location. Objects, however, are not stored in variables. Um, objects are referenced by variables. So what happens is the memory is created for an object on an area of memory called the heap. Um, this is an area that's different from the data stack, which is where primitive variables live. Um, you have these other variables, these reference variables or class variables, um, that are created on the uh, heap. So these variables are referenced. Uh, these objects are referenced by a variable. So if you have, uh, when you have a variable that's referencing an object, it contains the memory address of the object's location. So that's what a reference has in it. Um, then it is said that the variable references the object. Now, strings are special because you don't have to use the new keyword with them, which we'll see in a minute. Um, whenever you write, whenever you write a string literal, uh, Java creates an object and store uh, on the heap and stores that string. So it does not matter um, if you are using it in line in a uh, system.out.print line or anything else. Whenever you put double quotes around something and it, you know, uh, knows that it's a string, it's going to create it on the heap. So it create an object. When you say string city name, this part basically just says I have a reference. Um, that can point to a string, that can contain a string. Uh, or, well, it actually points to the string object. So basically it can contain a memory address for the string that lives on the heap. So what we have here in this whole thing here is, on the right side, it creates an object on the memory heap um, and holds the string Charleston. And then on the left side, we are declaring a variable of type string and its identifier is city name, and it will hold the memory address that is returned uh, that this Charleston string lives at. 
So this is kind of a visual depiction. You have city name, uh, which is a variable. This variable contains an address. It does not directly contain uh, Charleston, the stream. But this, in turn, this address is the address on the heap of Charleston. Now that may be a little fuzzy right now and it may not make sense why we're doing it. You don't have to worry so much about it, just kind of try to understand um, that uh, the primitive versus reference is different. So reference contains a memory address, primitive directly contains the value that you're storing in it. A variable can be assigned a string literal. So just like we had before, I can say string value equals hello. Strings are the only objects that can be created in this way. A variable uh, can be created using the new keyword. So this is essentially what's going on behind the scenes when you just say this. Uh, most object or all other um, objects, class uh, objects that are created from classes, have to use the new keyword. Uh, this is the method at, that all the other objects must use when they are created. You have to say the type of data, data type uh, identifier equals new, then the object again, and then if you have any um, overloaded constructor like we have here, um, you will use that. So for a string, if I have a string variable, string my name equals John, and then I say system.out.println, I put my name is and then put the variable my name, the string variable my name, and then run it, it will at the bottom uh, in the console put my name is John. Now again, in Eclipse you could, if you wanted to move the console over here or somewhere else if you prefer it to be there, uh, but I typically just keep it at the bottom. So, since string is a class, objects that are instances of it have methods associated with them. One of these methods is the length method. This tells you um, how many uh, characters are in the string that you're printing out, or the string that you're utilizing. So if I say system.out.println and I say the string is, and I say my name dot length, Base characters long. I can run that and it'll print out my name is John because of the first uh, print line statement and then it will print out the string is four characters long uh, because of the my name dot length method being called. So that is a method that belongs to the string class so any object created of the string class uh, can um, utilize the length method. Uh, the string class contains many methods that help with the manipulation of strings. String objects themselves in Java are immutable, which means they cannot be changed. Um, many of the methods of a string uh, object can create new versions uh, of the object. So. Um, you do have some uh, string objects like substring, and you have a ton of different um, methods that can be used that are not even in the book. Um, so you could, um, for example, you could use uh, two lowercase, length, char at, or two uppercase. So if I wanted to, um, I could have a separate string variable here. I'll call it upper name and then and then later on I plan on using it we'll say upper name equals my name dot uh, oops my name dot two uppercase that returns the uppercase version uh, of whatever the string is on this left side of the of the dot operator the period so this my name contains John you'll note that if I put system dot out dot print lin, and I put the uppercase is, um, actually I put upper name as a separate string, so I'll just do that. If I run it now, it will print out the uppercase is John. You also have two lowercase, which would obviously 
uh, put the entire string in lowercase. Scope is an important concept in any programming language that uses variables, and most do. Scope refers to the part of the program that the, uh, has access to a variable's contents. Variables declared inside a method, like the main method, are called local variables. Local variable scope begins at the declaration of the variable and ends at the end of the method in which it was declared. So, if I do something like this, let's say, um, I'm going to close that and make another one called variables, or called scope. Uh, we'll call this scope. So if I have something like this, if I have an integer uh, value equal to 15, we'll say, and then if I put before it system.out.print line, and I try to use the value before it is declared, I'm going to get an error. If I hover over that, it says this value cannot be resol resolved to a variable. Um, we can give it, uh, if we put it before the usage of the value, uh, the variable named value, then it will work, and it will print out the 15. But you have to declare a variable before it can be used. Comments are also extremely important. This is uh, section 2.11, if you're looking in the book. The scope was uh, 2.10. Comments are extremely important. Um, they provide uh, ways of leaving yourself or other programmers information uh, that you can come back and uh, look at. They also they can be explanatory and there are three kinds in Java. Um, the single line comments, uh, anything after the two forward slashes will be ignored. Uh, anything on the same line. Um, a block comment or a multi-line comment starts with a forward slash star and ends with a star forward slash. Anything in between them, even if it spans multiple com uh, multiple lines, will be considered a comment and will be ignored by the compiler. Then there's javadoc comments. These are a special kind. They're very similar to the block comments in syntax, except you start it with two stars and end with one star, just like the uh, multi-line block comment. You start with two stars. That will allow you to uh, create uh, javadocs. Now, Java docs basically are just HTML uh, documents that will you can document your code with. You can use the Java doc command utility uh, utility program uh, that comes with the Java developer kit. Um, you can also set it up in Eclipse so that it will generate Java docs as well. Um, and then once you have it set up, um, you can go to uh, Project Generate Java Doc, and any Java document uh, documentation you have in here, it will. Uh, generate a java doc from that and put it in a documents uh, folder but as a simple example here just of regular commenting let's say i want to uh, just say a single comment i'll say i'm printing a value here now this comment is not very useful it wouldn't be one you would see in a pro uh, professional program because um, industry level programmers are able to look at this immediately and say oh it's printing a line and it's going to contain the value which is a variable but this gives you an example of how to do a single line uh, comment. Now, you could actually put them on the same line as code and just say, uh, here is where values printed out or printed. Um, you can do something like that. Now, if I need multiple lines of commenting, like, for example, um, when you turn in your programming project, you should have a multi-line comment. Notice that Eclipse automatically adds these additional stars. These are not actually required, but the first one, where it has a forward slash star, and the last one, a star forward slash, are required to delineate uh, where the end and begin of the comment comments are. So I could put something like this, John Baugh, CIS 1500, uh, Java Programming. Then you could put Winter 2014. And that would be an acceptable comment for uh, your program. You could delete some and change some of the... Uh, organization here so it's a little bit uh, more streamlined it's up to you 
but just make sure that you close the comment. If you do not close the comment, it will comment out the entire program and will cause all kinds of problems. So you've got to make sure that you um, close the comment. You cannot put a space between the star and the forward slash or the slash, forward slash, and the star up at the top. Again, these are uh, not required. These extra stars in between are not required. But they do make it look prettier, so some people prefer them. So that's multi-line comment and single line comment here. So you've got the block comment and then just the regular old single line comment. Notice on the next line when it starts, you're allowed to write code. Uh, so you don't have to delineate it at the end with anything if you don't want to. So um, this right here is an example of what a Java doc uh, looks like. It's an HTML file that's generated uh, from specific uh, uh, commenting. So it will actually give you, you'll notice a lot of stuff that's uh, documented like this online if you look up anything about Java. Uh, this is because it's very standard. Java docs are extremely uh, useful because they explain, you can write what does the method do, um, do all kinds of different things. Uh, programming style. The programming style refers to um, the uh, way that a particular programmer programs. How their what their code looks like. Um, it is important though, um, because it defines the use of spaces, indentations, blank lines, and punctuation characters uh, on how the programmer visually arranges uh, the code. Eclipse kind of does some of this uh, for you, but you have to decide. You know, do you want uh, extra spaces in between, say, a comment and um, a variable that you declared? You could, if you wanted to, uh, as far as the pro, uh, the um, compiler is concerned, uh, you could. You don't want to. You don't want that comment there. That would be a problem. But um, you could put a bunch of different stuff on the same line. I could declare a bunch of variables and put anything I want on the same line. So I could put a value here, declare it as long as it's uh, separated by a semicolon here, then a printout statements with a semicolon, and then a vari another variable declared, and I could do another printout. I could do whatever I want. Um, pretty much. Now at the bottom you'll notice in the console that the console does not print this out any differently than when we had it written on different lines. But this is hard to read. Okay, if I separate this out a little bit more, I could um, uh, see where I have variables declared and where I have printout statements a lot more easily. Now, typically I would put the variable declarations together, the local variable declarations together, um, because it just looks, it looks better that way. So that is part of the programming style. Also, um, putting your name and information at the top in a comment or putting certain Java doc comments, that has to do with your, your style. Um, some people, when they write uh, Java, like um, many people that write Java especially, will not put an additional line between the method heading and the open curly brace. That's acceptable. The compiler does not care. The compiler will still compile and still run the program. But um, I prefer, it, uh, when I write them myself, I prefer putting the open curly brace on the next line. Some people don't, and that's fine. Either way you want to do it is fine. Um, indentation. The indentation is involved with uh, your programming style. You should use proper indentation. Each block of code should be indenta indented a few spaces from its surrounding block. Uh, two to four s spaces are sufficient. Uh, tab characters should be avoided. If you're using it directly using a tab, um, then that's that can be a problem. Um, but if you do one, two, three, four, um, that's fine too. But typically, when I'm in Eclipse, I just I just hit the tab. Um, you can actually make it so that Eclipse uh, generates just uh, space characters as well. Uh, tabs can vary in size between application and devices. Most programming editor text editors allow the user to replace the tab with spaces. Um, so, you, but you should use spacing so that you can see what you're doing. Um, the scanner class is one of the things you're going to need for your program programming assignment. Um, we will talk about that in just a minute. I'm going to take a quick break, and I suggest you do the same. 
if you haven't paused it already, and we're going to uh, come back to this in just a few minutes. All right, so the scanner class is extremely important uh, in order to interact with the user. So, uh, so far, we've only um, done some very, very simple uh, printouts and declared variables and stored values in them, but we've uh, they've been pretty static, meaning that um, in this case, in this context, I would say that the um, keyboard, uh, having never been uh, read from before, uh, we've been uh, prevented from interacting with the user. So we haven't really had any um, mouse interaction. We haven't had any keyboard interaction. Um, we've just basically been uh, going with variables with uh, predetermined values and we've not had any user input. So what makes most programming's interest, uh, programs interesting and useful in many cases are the ability to interact with the user. So um, we're going to start with the scanner class. Okay, so it is a class. The name of the class is scanner. So a class is basically a blueprint for an object, remember. Um, so it basically um, defines what does an object of this scanner type look like. Uh, the scanner class is defined in java.util, so we have to put this import statement at the top uh, before we use the scanner class. So um, let's look here. Um, we'll create a program okay, class. We'll call it uh, scanner test. Make sure not to call it scanner because that will uh, interfere with the scanner object. You want to call it something else. Um, so we've got our scanner test. Void string. Oops. Oops. Sorry. Main string parts. Okay. And to use um, uh, import java.util um, in order to use the scanner class. So you could actually just put, uh, yeah, java.util.scanner. We'll do that. That seems that's more reasonable. We don't need to import everything. Uh, java.util.scanner. I can make a new scanner. Uh, scanner. I'll just do a lowercase version. Scanner um, equals new scanner. And then you'll note the parameter is important because it tells um, where does the or what's the scanner scanning? What's it using? So you have system.in, so that uh, says that the standard input, um, in this case, or in most cases, it's going to be uh, the table, or the, I'm sorry, it's going to be the uh, keyboard, and we're going to put system.in, it says input stream, it's the standard input stream, so it's already open and ready to use. Um, we can use the scanner for other types, which we'll see in a later, later lectures. And uh, now I can uh, prompt for some information. I'll say, please enter your name. And we have different utilities that we can utilize uh, that the scanner um, has available to it. We have many different methods. There's next byte, next double, next float, next int, next line, which is for strings, next long, next short, um, etc. So for a name, we figure we're going to store a string in this. So I'll put string name, and I'll um, initialize it to the empty string. Now when, it, when I ask for the name, I'm going to say name equals. Now where am I getting it from? I'm not setting it just to, directly to a value. I'm waiting uh, for the input from the uh, keyboard. So what you're going to do is you're going to use our scanner object called scanner. I'm going to say scanner dot next line. Because this is going to wait on um, a string. It's going to wait on the user to input a string. So when they in input their name, then I'm going to ask them for their age. Okay, now in this case, an age is going to be an integer. So I'm going to say in age and I'm going to initialize it to zero. I'm going to ask them for their age, and I'm going to say age equals. Now, this time we're not going to use scanner.nextLine, because next line um, is expecting there to be a string. In this case, it's going to be an integer. So you're going to say scanner.nextInt. Okay. 
Now at the bottom, I'm going to say system.out.println. I'm going to say hello, comma, and then outside of parentheses, I'm going to concatenate the name and then say you are um, age years old. So I just broke this up into two lines. I could have put it all in one line. This is just for uh, better readability. So we'll say hello blank, or whatever the name is. Uh, you are, this is in double quotes, and I have uh, plus for concatenation. Age, which even though this is an integer, remember that uh, when it is, when the plus symbol is used between a string and something of another type, um, the string will take precedence. So the integer is automatically converted to a string. If I run this, You'll notice down at the bottom it says please enter your name. It doesn't print the rest of the stuff yet. It just says please enter your name in the console. Now, um, I have to, it's waiting because of the, the scanner.next line. It's waiting for the user to enter something. Then when I hit, hit enter, it's going to say what is your age? If I, if I type, uh, we'll say uh, 30, and then hit enter, it'll then say hello John, you are 30 years old. So in the cases where Eclipse puts it in green, uh, these two were actually input. It actually uh, caused the insertion point to blink and wait on the user to enter uh, values so it could obtain the values. Now up in the code, we see name equals scanner dot next line. That's where it was pausing after please enter your name. It can't complete the program until you put some sort of input for that. Same thing for age equals scanner dot next int. And then finally, I print out the, I just repeat basically the information that the user gave me. Now, I could modify or use in some other way the uh, values that the user entered. If they entered their age, I could say in 10 years, you're going to be something, something. So in fact, I'll do that right now. Say age plus equals, we'll use our compound operator that we just uh, learned. Uh, combined operator, com or also known as compound operator. I could say system.up.print. Uh, print lin. I'm going to say in 10 years you will be and then just I just reused the age variable. I could have used a separate variable or done whatever I wanted really in that case. I'm going to uh, start the program again. I'll say my name is Bob and I'm uh, 32 and it'll say hello Bob you're 32 years old. In 10 years you will be 42. So you can perform math on the, var on the uh, value that they uh, gave you, just like any other value. If I just coded it from the beginning as 42 or 32, and I could have added 10 to it and turned it into 42, I can also grab these values from the user. A dialog box is another form of input. Um, this might be more interesting to some of you, um, even though we'll, we'll kind of be using both, but this kind of introduces you to some of the um, uh, what we call GUI uh, components of Java. This is GUI GUI, means graphical user interface. Um, the graphical user interface uh, that we have available to us, uh, we have quite a bit available to us in Java, but in this case we're going to use dialog boxes. A dialog box is a small graphical window that displays a message to the user or requests input. A variety of dialog boxes can be displayed using the J option pane. So J option pane is extremely useful for obtaining user input or displaying a uh, dialog box to the user. Two of the boxes are message dialog. This is a dialog, a dialog box that basically just displays a message. That's kind of like um, the um, system.out.print line, but it's in a graphical format this time. The input dialog, on the other hand, is a dialog box that prompts the user for the input, and then you give it input and can obtain input from it. So this is a little bit different. Um, than what we've dealt with so far. But the J option pane class, again, it's a class, it is not automatically available to your Java programs. Uh, just like the scanner class where we had to include uh, Java util.scanner, uh, we have to in import the JavaX, Java extended dot swing, the swing library, dot J option pane. This statement tells the compiler where to find the J option pane class. So I'm going to create another, yet another file class. 
Um, this is going to be called uh, dialogue test. Um, I'm going to click finish on this one and public static void main string args. In this case, uh, in order to use um, the J option pane, I have to import javax.swing.joption pane. All right. So to actually utilize this, um, you'll note that if I can use a couple different uh, methods of the J option pane. One is J option pane. You use it directly. You don't have to create a variable of this type. You just say show message dialog. The first parameter uh, we don't need to worry about for now. The second parameter will just say whatever we want to say. So hello world. That's an example. Um, if I run it, notice that I'm not going to get um, console output at this point. But instead, I get a message box that pops up and says hello world. Okay, and then I just acknowledge it by hitting OK. I can put anything I want. I can put uh, John Baugh is awesome and then run it again and I'm going to get the same uh, thing. It's just a message and it says John Baugh is awesome. Um, that is the uh, show dialog version or the show message dialog version. There's another version if I want to grab um, I'll say username I'll say John Baugh is, uh, is awesome. I actually, you know, we're going to use this two different ways. I'm going to say um, username is equal to J option pane dot um, show input dialog. The message you put here is, we'll say, please enter your name. All right. And then I'm going to put down here, I'm going to make use of whatever the username that they uh, put was and then concatenate it with is awesome. So this is going to be really really cool. We hit this and uh, the run and please enter your name an input dialog pops up. I'm going to say John Baugh then I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to get a message box that says John Baugh is awesome. Now just so you know I didn't pull a fast one on you I'm going to run it again. I'm going to put Alan Jackson name of another professor here also a country singer but the professor here is not the country singer so uh, don't ask him to sing. It won't be pretty. Uh, hit OK. You'll get message and it'll say Alan Jackson is awesome. We can do this with another example just to verify. Uh, we'll just put uh, Billy Crab Feathers. So Billy Crab Feathers is uh, put as input. Hit OK. And it'll say Billy Crab Feathers is awesome. Alright. So now we know how to use uh, ver the uh, message dialog and the input dialog using the show message uh, dialog and the show input dialog respectively to uh, show information show uh, some sort of statement to the user and also how to obtain information uh, from the user obtain input from the user so um, again the message dialogs the first argument will be discussed in chapter 7 so don't worry if you wondered why we put null uh, for the first argument, we don't have to worry about that right now. Second argument is just the message that's to be displayed. So when you write hello world as the second argument, um, that is uh, what is displayed. So input dialog is a quick and simple way to get the user to enter data. Um, we're going to work with some more complicated GUI stuff later on. But we don't need to worry about that right now. Uh, a program that uses J option pane does not automatically stop executed when the end of the main is reached. Reached. Java generates a thread, which is a process running in the computer, uh, when a uh, J option pane is created. If the system exit method is not called, this thread continues to execute. So the system exit method requires an integer argument. The argument is called the exit code. Um, so uh, to make these uh, more appropriate. Uh, you want to uh, call exit at the end of a program that you used uh, Java or that you used uh, J option pane in. So at the very end, you don't want to leave this running, you just say system.exit and then pass it a zero. Okay, that's all you have to do at the end of these. So when I run it, uh, enter a name, good, it runs, great. Alright, so we're pretty happy right now. Just make sure you do this. Um, that'll in, that'll ensure that the thread is terminated. 
and um, if we need to convert a string to a number, uh, when J Option Pane's input dialog method returns the input, it al always returns it as a string, even if they enter what they consider a number. Um, a string containing a number such as um, it's kind of stupid, such as 127.89 can be converted to a numeric data type. So if you need to utilize it as a, a numeric type, you need to use the parse methods. Um, integer um, dot parse int, float dot parse float, double dot parse double. These are all different types that you can, or different um, methods that you can use. Let's say I ask the user, I'm going to say int uh, age again, and this in this case I'm going to say, um, after I say you're awesome, I'm going to say um, age equals, oh I can't do that yet, I have to actually use a, we'll use another string, we'll call it str age. I'm going to grab the age this way. I'm going to say str age equals j option pane dot show input dialog. And I'm going to say please enter your age. And then once I have the age, it's in string format now. So I could just print it back to the user if that's all I'm going to use it for. But what if I want to add 10 to it or add 20 to it or uh, subtract it, some number from something else? Well, I need to have it in integer format. So I have my integer variable at the top. I say age equals integer dot parse int, and I pass it the string I'm, I want to convert or parse into an integer. So I say integer dot parse int, and I pass it the parameter or the argument strh, which is the string. And as long as it um, is successful, it should work. So I could say age plus equals um, 20. And then say system.out.println, I'll say in 20 years you will be, and then uh, concatenate age to the end. So it starts the program with the first input, I'll say John Baugh, John Baugh is awesome, then it's going to ask me for my age, and I'm going to say um, I'm 30, so hit OK, and it's going to say, now notice I did not use a message dialog this time I actually printed it out to the console so you can actually use a combination um, I put in 20 years you will be 50 down at the console I could have put another option pane and done another message dialog that would have been fine um, so this shows you can mix them these are the different uh, types of parse methods examples are in the slides um, and this is how you can read and uh, get an integer from the input dialog just like I did before but in this case, you just have to parse it after you're done with it. Um, you can read a double as well. So let's say double price in a string. Get the string representing the double from the input dialog or other source. And then um, let's say you use next line with the, the scanner. You can also convert it. Any, any uh, source you get it in a string format, as long as it can be converted to a double, you can use the double.parse double or integer.parse int. Uh, short dot parse short long dot parse long etc all kinds of different options so um, that's pretty much it that's all I've got for you today so we finished chapter two again do not forget to work on your programming assignment it is due um, on February the uh, 14th at 1159 p.m. Uh, please make sure to work on it if you have any questions please feel free to email me or, pay, or uh, participate in the discussion boards um, on the desire to learn site and I will upload this uh, video to YouTube and also I will post a, a link to it as soon as I can so thank you very much and have a great day